The Pages app on iPad has made creation of books, digital books, so simple and easy. Creating, publishing, sharing, um, or using them to collect learning artifacts in the classroom. I'm gonna take you through, through a brief walkthrough of how to create books using Pages. We'll launch Pages on iPad, and we'll use the plus in the top right-hand corner to start a new book. And if you'll notice, the template library has books as one of the options and gives you two categories of books. Portrait books, which are used for mostly text-based books where the text size will change based on the user or the reader. And then landscape books where the layout of the page will remain the same no matter how which user, which reader is reading it and changing the text size. So I recommend that if you're going to do something that has any kind of a layout, um, to choose a landscape book template to begin with. Now you can use one of the templates that are there, or you can start with a completely blank book. If you use one of the templates, then it has some ready-made placeholders. So we can put our title. We can fill in any images by going straight to the camera roll. We can manipulate that image there. And then simply either scroll or tap on page two. If we decide we don't want page two, just tap and hold and get that delete menu to pop up. And we can choose a different layout um, or we can just delete all of these additional pages and use our first page kind of as our cover and then use our plus in the bottom left hand side to add any of these page layouts from this template theme. Um, I'll start with one of these blank pages to show you that you don't even need a layout to be able to add to your document. So using the plus in the top right hand corner, you can add tables, you can add charts, you can add shapes, any of the hundreds and hundreds of shapes in the shape library, or you can add images, photos and videos, use the camera, the built-in camera to take a picture right in the midst of creating the book. You can record audio, we'll come back to that in a second. You can add an image gallery or insert from a file. You can add a drawing, or you can even use math type to create an equation. So let's start with the photo or the video. And this of course is very similar, where we'll use the camera roll to just place our pictures and resize them and place them wherever we want to on the page. Um, the camera is self-explanatory, we can take that front-facing or rear-facing picture with the camera built into the iPad. The image gallery allows us to add multiple pictures at once. And we can just tap this plus down in the bottom corner here. And we can get multiple images all at one time. And then each of those images can be um, edited individually using the forward and backward arrows. Also, each image can have its own caption. These little dots on, underneath of the image gallery help me navigate. Um, also, I can tap on my formatting paintbrush when I'm on this image gallery, and I can uncheck the box that allows me to have a different caption for every picture and I can say same caption for all images um, or I can take off that caption altogether. I can change the order of the pictures within my, um, my, my gallery of images. Here if I tap on manage images and then maybe I want to slide this picture to the top, I can tap edit and then just tap and hold and, and drag these little lines on the right hand side and I can add images directly from the inspector here as well or if I decide there's more images that I'd like to add I can just add on top of them add images um, from my camera roll so when a reader reads my book they can swipe through those pictures pretty quick and easy we can also add a text box by using the shapes go all the way back to the very beginning to the basic and easily get a text box After we've typed in text into our text box, we just select it and then we would use our formatting paintbrush again 
to change it to a different font. Possibly a different color. And style and size, the same thing. Let's select this and go to our formatting paintbrush and just increase the size to fill that text box but just a little bit better. There we go. And so we have a kind of our label on our page. Let's get our layout here a little bit better. And that looks pretty good. All right, we've got um, our plus down here. We're going to add another page. And on this one, we're going to go back over to that final tab in the um, adding items gallery and do a drawing. And this time it brings up the drawing tools. If you have an Apple Pencil or a stylus, you, if you have a pencil, you can just tap right on the screen to get those drawing tools up too. Let's go ahead and draw our Christmas tree using the fill tool here. And we'll change our paint color to yellow. Apply star here. Use the tap to fill option. Tap inside it. And we'll decorate our tree with some Christmas ornaments. And there we go. I'm going to tap done and now my drawing becomes an editable object that I can resize and place on my page. Um, I can do even more with it if you tap the paintbrush. There's a really cool feature in the drawing here that will bring it to life with an animation. It's actually set up to loop in this example and just play it back in a quick animated um, rendition of what I drew. All right, we've got three pages. Probably my favorite feature of creating books with the Pages app is to be able to add audio and um, narrate the text that you've written and add it to the pages. So on any of these pages, we can add an additional audio button just by adding using the plus and going over to that final tab with the images and the media and then coming down to record audio, the microphone. And I get a record button at the bottom of my screen and it starts recording my voice. On the first day of Christmas, ESU 8 gave to me. I'll just use insert, top right corner, and it gives me a speech bubble that now becomes a part of my interactive book for the reader to tap on and listen and hear my voice on that page. I encourage any students who are using pages to create books to not only create the layout and the design of their page, but always bring their book to life, their pages to life, by adding their real authentic voice as well. So we have our book, and it's ready for us to share. Here are some options in sharing. If you use the three dots in the far top right corner, um, we can actually send this to other people with their iCloud accounts or their Apple ID, and they can also edit it in real time. Uh, much like a Google Doc. <laughs> um, it can also create a shareable link so that others can contribute and edit some of the pages, much like a Google Doc. We can also use the share option, the share arrow, and simply message it, email it, airdrop it, and send it to people that way. Another option in the More menu is simply to export. And these are the export options for a pages book. We can save it as a PDF, and we would here lose our functionality of our image gallery, of any videos that we had on the pages, and of the audio buttons, but we could easily print it from that PDF if we did want a printable version. Um, we could also turn it into a Word document, a rich text format document, and an EPUB. And an EPUB is what creates our digital books. So if we are truly going to build a digital book out of this book, um, then we title it. 
we put in our, our author's name. Um, and we can decide if we want that first page to become the book cover or not use that um, that first page as the book cover and then choose a different image if we wanted to. I will definitely leave it as use the first page as the book cover. Um, you can also see under the advanced, there's a few other options. I could look at it in a two-page spread type view, um, embed the fonts, and if we want it to be compatible on the Apple Bookstore, we could slide that over and it might strip it of some incompatible files in there. Um, and here we'll just hit export and then it just takes a few seconds to create that um, exported version. So now it's a standalone. It doesn't require the Pages app anymore to be read. And from here I can airdrop it. I can message it. I can email it. I can add it to notes. I can save it to my files. There we go. Or I can go straight to books, to the Books app, where I would read this book right on my bookshelf in my digital book library. And it goes right away to that page two. I can tap the audio button, me a countdown. There we go. I can go through my image gallery. I can swipe the pages. I can play back my animated picture. And I can pinch it to close it and bring my book back to my bookshelf there with the cover. I'm going to go back out to my documents list in my Pages app and just bring up a couple other examples of um, using pages to create digital books, um, specifically in creating kind of like a guiding template for students to fill in. In um, this example, students are creating an alphabet book and they just got to, you know, they can choose the letter of the alphabet that's their letter off of this first page and then they can place it onto the second page just by tapping and pasting and then they can place that wherever they want. They can edit the text boxes. They can edit the text that's in the placeholders. They can definitely add images to the image gallery. Um, I'm going to also show here that if I were to pull up my um, photos in split screen view, press and hold and drag that photos app to the sidebar so I get my screen in split screen view. And this is a, a great feature where I can actually fill an image with a picture. So if I just put that right on top of that um, placeholder and make it smaller here so that the Grinch hats fit inside of the M and then I'll hit done and it kind of like is like a green screen it masks it out and you can really do that with any shape. So if even if I were to add um, just another basic shape here, let's add, let's add a donkey. Okay and then we will um, again, use the, the Grinch hats, press and hold, drag it over, green plus means it's filling, I could fill that donkey with whatever I want it to be filled with, it's kind of like a cookie cutter effect, so that's pretty fun, and it's laying on top of my page, and then to get rid of my split screen view, I'll just swipe that back off to the right, and continue to edit my book, so on this page three, there's a text placeholder for the students to put their research, and then a final page four, where they take a picture of an actual drawing on a piece of paper and add that there. And that turns into something that looks like this. You can see um, an example here. And um, of course, adding the audio is, is a great way to bring that book to life even more. Here's another um, template for book creation. And this one, just getting started with placeholders for images, image galleries. Um, text boxes and, and really you don't need it because like we mentioned before when you start with a blank book you can just literally do the blank book you don't have to have boxes there and you can still add pages over here on the left hand side and you can still add objects to the page including anything from the object gallery um, but if you want something to get rid of that fear of the blank slate then you can definitely um, create, kind of get a book started for your students and then just share that pages file back from all your pages documents. Um, you can just press and hold and, and hit that share button and then decide maybe you want to send it out on Apple Classroom so that they all get a copy of that book um, and can make and 
an edited version for their own selves and then hand it back into you. Or maybe you want to um, collaborate and add people here that can work on it with you, much like a Google Doc. So you can do that from your main pages library as well. Um, one final book example. This is one. This one is for an outdoor workshop, so that students or teachers could actually take their iPad with them as they are out about on the desert trail um, and practice how to tie in some curricular areas um, into the opportunity to create on the iPad. So there's some lesson activities, and then there's some placeholders for the learner to actually practice adding the images or the video files as they do them, and I'm just going to kind of click through these pages. So this again was a book that was designed prior to the learners using it, and when it was shared with everyone, then the learner could take their iPad out on the trail and fill in the placeholders with their own ideas, as well as um, adding in their own pages if they wanted to as well. So doing some observational sketching and using the drawing tools to annotate on top of images. Um, that's just a really great example of how powerful the iPad is as a creation tool and specifically in that realm of creating digital books. One final thing that just recently has become an option in creating books with the Pages app is the ability to publish on the Apple Bookstore. So if for some reason, whether it be for free or for a fee, you can actually set up an Apple Books account with your Apple ID and then go straight from this Pages app using the three dots um, and down to publish to Apple Books. You will have to sign in with that um, Apple ID that already has an, an iTunes Connect account um, behind it. It's not hard. Um, basically filling out a form and getting approval um, to publish your books to the Apple Bookstore and then you'll go through the, the sign-in process. It'll have to um, go through an approval process. It maybe takes not very long, depending on the length of your book, a day or two or three, and then it can be available um, for anybody to download and possibly even purchase on the Apple Bookstore if you have it set up that way. Um, so that's pretty powerful in, in allowing your your students and yourself an opportunity for real life publishing and the opportunity to reach a wide audience, even with a book as simple as the one that we did as an example today. I hope this gives you some ideas. Um, if anything, um, know that much of this is um, possible in pages on the Mac as well with a few little tweaks. Um, and if you ever want to try any kind of a book creation project in your classroom, whether it be as the cumulative review of a unit, if it's um, sharing a project, a learning portfolio, or a science notebook. Uh, maybe it's for a class project where each student contributes a piece and it puts together a class collection book. Uh, no matter the purpose, you can find a use for pages creating digital books. And I hope that you will reach out to us at ESU8. If you ever want to try with an extra set of hands, we'd be more than willing to help you. So thank you for listening, and Merry Christmas.